Hello and welcome to my talk for the APS March meeting 2022 in Chicago. My name is Andrew Mitchell from University College Dublin and uh, today I want to talk about the idea of using charge condo nanoelectronic circuits as quantum simulators. This work is based upon these recent uh, preprints and before we get going I'd like to thank my collaborators especially the experimental groups of David Goldhaber Gordon in Stanford and Frederick Pierre in uh, CNRS Paris, who built these quantum devices pictured here and which I'll be talking about in this work. Quantum dot devices constitute a wonderfully versatile and tunable platform for realizing a whole host of correlated electron physics. In particular, traditional semiconductor quantum dot systems have been shown to exhibit the non-trivial many-body physics of generalized quantum impurity models. Indeed, detailed comparisons between experiments and theory for basic models have established such quantum dot devices as accurate experimental analog quantum simulators for these models. And this has included a rich range of physical phenomena, such as the Coulomb blockade, Condo effect, quantum criticality, emergence, and so on. And here I'm just illustrating some of the examples of these systems. Devices with one or two dots capture the essence of certain properties of real bulk materials. However, recently efforts have been made to scale up quantum dot circuits to more elaborate structures of coupled sites as a more direct quantum simulator of lattice effects. For example, recently quantum dot clusters have been used to capture certain aspects of the physics of the Hubbard model, of the Heisenberg model, and even Nagaoka ferromagnetism. Still, the experimental implementation is limited at the moment to three or four dots, in part due to the challenges of creating an array of perfectly identical but individually addressable quantum dots. Also, the types of interactions realizable in traditional quantum dot systems is somewhat limited. So in this talk, I want to describe some advances in building analog quantum simulators using quantum dots made from hybrid semiconductor metal structures, which offer some new advantages. Here we'll be exploiting Matveyev's charge condo paradigm in which a large quantum dot or island is connected to two or more leads. In a large magnetic field, the electrons are effectively spinless, but we can regard the electron's position in the vicinity of the QPCs as a pseudo spin, with lead electrons labeled up and dot electrons labeled down. Of course, the dot is also interacting and has a finite capacitance. So gate voltage tuning to the macroscopic charge degeneracy point of the dot gives us an effective two level system on the dot, which can also be mapped to up and down pseudo spin states. These can be interconverted by tunneling onto or off the QPCs. Altogether, the system maps directly onto a multi-channel condo model, but notes that there is no underlying Anderson model here, and the condo coupling J is not necessarily perturbatively small as in regular ultra small quantum dots. Here it is controlled by the QPC transmission, which can be large. This is important because it means that the resulting condo temperatures characterizing the onset of strong correlation physics can also be large. In particular, this means that the interesting physics we want to look at can be probed at experimental temperatures. The experimental realization, pioneered by the group of Frederick Pierre, utilizes a hybrid semiconductor metal structure which endows the dot with an effective electronic reservoir and results in a long dot dwell time for the electrons. This means that electrons around each of the QPCs can be regarded as essentially independent conduction electron channels. The transport experiment um, involves electron tunneling onto the dot, which thereby flips the dot charge pseudospin, and then tunneling off the dot onto the other lead, which flips the dot charge pseudospin back again, thus resetting the device ready for a uh, transport of another electron. So in terms of the effective spin model, this is a spin current boosted by the condo correlations. These multi-channel condo systems host exotic quantum critical points at which non-Fermi liquid physics emerge. They can provide access to more unusual phenomena by simulating models of frustrated interactions, in this case, frustrated condo screening. This leads to fractionalization with the appearance of Majorana fermions in the two-channel case and even more exotic Fibonacci enions in the three-channel case. These kinds of fractionalized zero modes have of course been long sought experimentally and are important in the context of topological quantum computation. So these charge condo circuits provide a possible route to these objects. As a demonstration of the accuracy of the experimental quantum simulator, we see essentially perfect scaling collapse of conductance measurements onto the calculated universal curves for the simulated models. Although we have excellent agreement between experiment and theory for the transport in these systems, we do not have a direct measurement of the fractional excitations. 
a smoking gun signature of which would be their characteristic fractional entropy. An indirect measurement of the entropy can, however, be obtained by exploiting the Maxwell relation connecting charge changes to entropy changes as the gate voltage is varied across the Coulomb peak. If we can obtain somehow the temperature derivative of the dot charge, as I've illustrated here, then we can relate this to the fractional residual entropy at the critical point of these systems. The problem is that at present, the required charge measurements have not yet been made on such critical condo systems. Therefore, here we take an alternative approach in which we use our theoretical model to find a relationship between the experimentally measured conductance and the charge across a Coulomb peak. This, in turn, allows us to access the entropy via the Maxwell relation. In the two-channel case, the conductance charge relation can actually be derived analytically, and by re-examining existing transport data from the experiments, we can see a clear scaling of the extracted entropy towards the critical fractional value of log square root 2. The three-channel case is much more complex. Here, there is no exact analytic solution, but we can use state-of-the-art numerical renormalization group calculations to obtain numerical predictions for the model. Remarkably, by fitting a few parameters from the data, such as the charging energy, number of accessible charge states, and the QPC transmissions, we can completely reproduce the full Coulomb peak conductance curves obtained in experiment. We see here on the left the comparison between the experimental points and the NRG lines. Using a numerically derived conductance charge relation, together with the Maxwell relation, we can then extract a prediction for the residual entropy. We see on the right here a scaling towards the critical value, this time log of the golden ratio, a fingerprint of the emergent Fibonacci enion in this device. Of course, to simulate more complex systems, we need to be able to scale up the devices from individual dots, which I hope to have convinced you are very well under control by now, to multiple coupled dots. In particular, we'd like eventually to scale up to lattices. The metallic semiconductor hybrid dots offer a unique advantage because the continuum level spectrum on the dot depends only on the dot size, which can be very well controlled, as can the QPCs connecting the dots to each other and to leads. However, a prerequisite for scaling up such systems is to understand and control the inter-dot interactions. Within the charge condo paradigm, we actually now have a richer range of interactions to play with. We demonstrate that here in the simplest double dot system. The tunneling of the electrons at the central QPC connecting the dots is actually a correlated tunneling because it is accompanied by charge pseudospin flips on the two dots. Interestingly, this generates a coupling that favors a many-body coherent collective screening of the two dots, an inter-dot condo effect, if you like, and this competes with the individual dot lead condo effects. We make use of this novel coupling term and the condo competition to realize a new quantum critical point. Here I've plotted the charge stability diagram of the device with the conductance plotted as a color map as a function of the left and right dot gate voltages. The dark hexagons with zero conductance are the Coulomb blockade regimes with a definite number of electrons on each of the two dots. The bright lines are the charge fluctuation lines uh, which in the Matveyev picture um, map onto uh, condo spin flips. The brightest points of the diagram are, however, the triple points. Um, these are expected to have the highest series conductance because an electron can tunnel from the left lead onto the left dot, then onto the right dot, and then from there onto the right lead, all without leaving the ground state manifold of states. However, um, here we see that those interactions are condo renormalized, and the series transport is affected by the many-body entanglement that spreads between the two dots and into the leads. So on the right here, we see NRG results for the model. And there's an excellent agreement uh, between the experiment and the theory that confirms that we really have the right model to describe this device. An advantage of the computational solution is that we can go down to very low temperatures. Here I've gone down from 20 to 2 millikelvin. And um, when we do this, we see that the triple points really become rather well isolated uh, from the rest, and then their conductance is relatively boosted. At the triple point itself, we have a competition between different kinds of condo effect. We can have a condo effect uh, of the left dot with the left lead, of the right dot with the right lead, and then this coherent uh, inter-dot condo effect that I mentioned earlier. The frustration between these different condo effects leads to a quantum phase transition, 
We explored this theoretically within the model, and we can see that the entropy at the triple point goes from log 3 for the three degenerate states down to a rather curious half log 3, or log square root 3, um, which embodies these fractionalized quasi-particles at this novel critical point. In terms of quantum transport, we can calculate the universal line shapes for the conductance on flowing to the critical point on descending temperature and flowing away from the critical point when we introduce relevant uh, detuning perturbations. To confirm our predictions for the universal scaling of conductance at the critical point, we need to explore a wide range of temperatures. However, this is not actually feasible in the experiment, and so we adopt a different strategy. Since universality near the critical point implies that the conductance is only a function of the rescaled parameter t over t star, with t star an emergent scale from the detuning perturbations, we can instead fix the temperature and vary the gate voltages. And this leads to the prediction shown on the right hand side here. Comparing now to the experimental data, we see an excellent agreement and a non trivial scaling collapse to the universal curve for different detuning perturbations, here shown on the left and also the non-trivial three-half power law in the overall temperature rescaling of the conductance shown on the right. So this really confirms that not only is the double charge condo model the right one to describe new interdot coupling, but also that exotic quantum critical physics can be simulated in these kinds of devices. Okay, so this brings me to my conclusions that nanoelectronic circuits comprising charge condo quantum dots really are a highly tunable and versatile platform for realizing interesting physics. We saw this for single dots already, where we saw a condo frustration and fractionalization. And in double dot systems, we have a new range of interdot interactions uh, possible, which lead to interesting quantum critical physics. I guess the punchline is that all of this is scalable. Ultimately, the goal is to scale this up to clusters and lattices, where the experimental uh, devices really will be analog quantum simulators of hard problems that are beyond the reach of traditional computational methods. Thank you for your attention.